on this episode of In the Fight. Outside the wire, Marines come under attack from insurgents throughout Helmand Province. U.S. soldiers help Afghan troops attain perfection. U.S. and African forces work together to help bring stability to the region. We meet a staff sergeant who is responsible for the safety of hundreds of men and women. And we find out what measures are being implemented to ensure free and fair elections for the women of Afghanistan. Despite the progress that has been made in Afghanistan, Marines in Helmand province continue to get attacked by pockets of insurgent activity. Marine Sergeant Eric Wilterdink witnessed the skirmish firsthand with the men of 1st Battalion, 9th Marine Regiment, and brings us this story. Knowing that we're uh, being here at the late part of the war, understanding the, uh, the intent of both the President of Afghanistan as well as the ISAF commanders and all commanders above, with that, our mission is to disrupt the enemy in the insurgent's way of life. And so that means that uh, part of the, the planning was to live amongst them and have the insurgents disrupted by simply saying, hey, this is a different look. Uh, we ended up starting to establish our patrol base, setting up some uh, barricades, concertina wire out in the roads, just to limit vehicle traffic along the roads while we were gonna be staying there over the four days. And uh, when we started to actually construct some of our defensive barricades. We uh, started to receive some enemy machine gun and sniper fire about a thousand meters off to the east. Uh, so we were out there the following day, the 30th, uh, receiving the same harassing fire we received on the 29th all day. Uh, we ended up linking up with 1st Platoon Alpha Section with uh, Sergeant Early and Lieutenant Grissom. And we pushed a pretty large uh, dismounted patrol off to the east just to kind of limit the enemy's firing capabilities onto the patrol base from the east. Uh, heavily engaged the entire time we were pushing out towards them. Uh, once we got up to those compounds, the enemies were using as firing positions, they just continued to bound uh, all the way down to the south, trying to keep an 800 meter gap between their firing positions and our trucks. Uh, and we basically just pushed them out of the area so they didn't engage the PB for the rest of the uh, 30th. As snipers and all the dismounts at the compound of interest were trying to mount back up into their vehicles so they could retrograde back to uh, Camp Leatherneck, then it was starting to receive high volumes of machine gun fire from approximately 1,000 meters off to the west, uh, at which point most of my trucks uh, were able to establish bid and return fire with their crew served weapons. Uh, throwing smoke screens on the deck so that we could safely get people back in the vehicles. And uh, once both sections were accounted for, we conducted our movement back up to uh, Camp Leatherneck and returned to friendly lines. It's said that practice makes perfect. Army Sergeant Carl Greenwell heads out with some soldiers in Southern Afghanistan, whose job it is to help Afghan troops attain perfection. While others are just starting to get out of bed, soldiers from the 3rd Squadron and 2nd Cavalry Regiment have already started preparing, preparing for the day's events. They're at the range to hone their skills. And train the Afghan National Army on machine guns and mortars. At first, they were very nervous. I had to walk them to the steps in safety and constantly do it until they felt comfortable and confident in what they were doing. I think having them going through the procedures over and over and having to actually go through a live range, just building that muscle memory, I think that when they do go out there and get in contact, they'll refer back to the training and their muscle memory. Reporting from Kandahar Province, Afghanistan, I'm Army Sergeant Carl Greenwell. The 
MV-22 Osprey is the Marine Corps' most unique aircraft, requiring its crew to perform a range of tasks to fit the mission. Marine Corporal Joshua DeFore introduces us to a versatile crew chief responsible for keeping his Osprey operational. Looking up at the VM-22 Osprey, it's easy to spot the odd-looking aircraft. What isn't seen is the one Marine filling the multiple crew positions needed to keep the bird ready for anything. Corporal Nick Noah is a maintainer, loadmaster, flight observer, and machine gunner for his Osprey. His title is crew chief, but he's more of a jack of all trades. Well, being a crew chief, I guess every day is a little bit different. It's nice having, you know, new stuff to do every day. It breaks it up a lot. New zones, new things to move from about the AO. When Noah was originally assigned to be a crew chief for the Osprey, he wasn't sure what to expect. After enough flights, the aircraft's unique lift and speed has won him over. I guess I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, so I like to go fast. And I like, uh, I like to pull some Gs every now and then. And this aircraft definitely uh, will give you some of that. It's highly maneuverable. It's a bit like a roller coaster. So that's fun. Being a crew chief isn't all fun and games, and a fellow crew member says the job requires quite a bit of maturity. Responsibility is, is a big one that comes to mind. A lot of responsibility with the weapon back there and safely you know, engaging that weapon if need be. How they're handling the, the people in the back, how they're handling the gear and cargo. Responsibility to the pilots. Uh, there's normally you know, two captains or a major or a colonel. KL5 and 7 Roger. So for a corporal to tell them, hey, this is what's best from my perspective is huge. So we look for those things in our crew chiefs. For Noah, this is more than a simple job. It's about having an impact on the larger mission. It's good to, to go home at the end of the day and feel accomplished. Feel like uh, you've actually helped some people out, whether it be just moving you know, mail from one zone to another or putting troops right in there in the enemy's backyard ready to go uh, make contact. It's different every day. And, but always satisfying. Reporting from Camp Bastion, Afghanistan, I'm Marine Corporal Joshua DeFore. I'm Aaron Mike Dugan. I want to say hi to my family in Minot, my family in Quonset, and of course my family back home. I love you guys and I'll see you all soon. Hi, I'm Petty Officer Sean Greenan from Sector San Diego, and I'd like to give a shout out to my family and friends back home in Devil, Alabama. I'm Sergeant Christopher Bloom from hometown Broomfield, Colorado. I'd just like to tell my wife, Debbie, that I love her very much, and I love all my kids, and I can't wait to get home to y'all. Hi, I'm Special Agent Lakia Woods with the Tennessee State Brigade, Task Force Mule Skinner from Fort Drum, New York, at Bogham Airfield. I want to give a shout out to my family in Tennessee, Seattle, Georgia, back home. I love and miss my wife, my mom, my son, Prince, and I'll see you guys soon. Coming up, U.S. and African forces work together to help bring stability to the region. And we see an important step in keeping aircraft in the sky. Check out DividsHub.net for the latest accurate and reliable information as In the Fight continues. When referring to aircraft, what does the acronym STOVIL stand for? The answer when we return. I lost my brother Frank in the Battle of Iwo Jima. He served on four combat tours in Vietnam, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. There's a life that was lost behind that pin. I put it on for my wife. For my husband. My brother. My dad. My son. We wear it because we honor those that we lost. To learn more about the stories behind the Gold Star Pins, visit goldstarpins.org. With the new Military 24-7 app from Divots, you turn your favorite mobile device into a window to the front lines. Connect with your nation's finest men and women through our video and photography archives and stay up to date with news reported directly from service members. Quickly share information and breaking stories with friends via Facebook, Twitter, or email. News, photos, video, your military 24-7. From combat-related stress to the day-to-day -day stressors of life. This package is going to be completed. This is the fourth time this week. Stress can affect every Marine and Marine family. The De-Stress Line provides anonymous counseling for Marines and Marine families when it's needed most. 
If you're feeling the effects of stress, call today and let us help you win your personal battles. When referring to aircraft, what does the acronym STOVIL stand for? The answer is D, short takeoff and vertical landing. As conflict continues to plague the Central African Republic, U.S. forces are busy working with the African Union to bring stability and peace to the region. Army Specialist James Malpino files this report. Butted up against the airport runway in Bangui, Central African Republic, this camp of displaced persons is rapidly filling. Whole families fleeing the conflict that continues to plague their country. Their hope, at least in the beginning, is a more secure environment, and that starts here, Kigali, Rwanda. My job as a mobility officer is to help assist the Rwandans to move from Kigali, Rwanda, up to the Central African Republic. Uh, we're moving basically a battalion-sized element. U.S. Army Africa is heading the operation, supporting the Rwandan Defense Forces, the African Union, and the African-led International Support Mission to the Central African Republic, or MISCA, to deploy approximately 850 Rwandan soldiers. Airmen from Ramstein, Germany, McCord and Travis Air Force bases from Washington and California, and soldiers from Italy, Germany, and the States teamed up with the Rwandan Defense Forces on this operation. Despite that mix, or maybe because of it, the experience has been positive. We are happy to work with the Rwandan Defense Forces. They're very professional and very organized. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we are here, and the team is very motivated to get the mission done. Moving passengers and equipment twice a day on U.S. Air Force C-17 cargo planes is not something the Rwandan Defense Forces do on a daily basis, so the learning curve has had to be sharp. It's been a great relationship. Uh, the Rwandan forces are eager to learn. Uh, they're extremely dedicated to what they're doing. And for our personnel, it's a matter of just showing them what to do and they take it from there. It's been fantastic. Back in the Central African Republic, as passengers and equipment are delivered, a small team of soldiers from USARAF is on the ground to continue the process. Uh, our job is to make sure that uh, we have a good flow of information between the United States military and MISCA, the African Union-led uh, international mission to support the Central African Republic. Uh, that includes ensuring that the MISCA knows uh, what kind of troops are flowing in, at what rate, what their equipment is, et cetera, so that they can know how to employ them on the ground. In the end, the idea is to support the people of the Central African Republic and to help give these people some much needed relief. Reporting for U.S. Army Africa, I'm Specialist James Malpino, Vicenza, Italy. Almost every part of the Air Force's mission depends on a steady supply of fuel. Air Force Staff Sergeant Dustin Roberts shows us how the fuels laboratory keeps up the important job of quality testing so the Air Force can keep its aircraft flying. Every newcomer to Al Yadid Air Base is told how the 379th Air Expeditionary Wing is home to the Department of Defense's largest fuel operation. What many never find out is how instrumental one of the smallest shops on base is to the success of flying missions. A team of just three airmen take samples and test the quality of every shipment of fuel that arrives on base. We're making sure that we're not getting bad fuel, that there's not any sediments, any water, any other sort of different type of additive or any other type of grade that we're getting here. You know, the Air Force is very strict, so we're making sure that all those additives and grades of fuel meet the specification. The fuels lab is a key starting point for almost every operation on base. It's important for me to do my job correctly so everybody else can do their job the way that they need to do it. If I wasn't able to test the samples, then we're not able to fly those jets. We're not able to, to service anything else around the base because our fuel would be bad. Reporting from Al Yadid Air Base, I'm Air Force Staff Sergeant Dustin Roberts. Many people pay hundreds of dollars for the thrill of skydiving. But for many service members, jumping from an airplane is just another day at the office. Air Force Staff Sergeant Tristan McIntyre shows us how one military parachutist adds an extra level of excitement. Parachuting is a routine event for airborne certified service members. For Staff Sergeant Cameron Riley, today's jump provides something new. Um, this is my fifth duty assignment. 
and I've been doing jump operations for the last four years. With years of experience, merely leaping from a flying airplane just isn't enough. He has many jumps under his belt. This is 55 for me. But today's jump is different. This is my second as a jump master. With the title of jump master, Sergeant Riley's days get more interesting. It's a lot different. Uh, you have people's lives in your hands. When you're literally responsible for an entire stick or an entire aircraft of people, it, it, it makes you want to be on your A game. You definitely don't, don't want to half step anything. You want to make sure you know what's going on, your jumpers know what's going on, and that from the moment you load the aircraft to the moment all jumpers on the ground, everyone's accounted for and good to go. His responsibilities start hours before boarding the aircraft. Uh, we've been in since 06 this morning, and our time on target isn't until 1100. Uh, right now, we're doing a JMPI uh, inspection on the jumper just to make sure that we're going to turn around just to make sure there are no deficiencies on the, air, uh, on the uh, jumper, no deficiencies in the equipment. When each of his troops is thoroughly inspected, his duties as a jump master are only starting. We also do what's called a uh, JMB, jump master brief, with the air crew just to make sure they're all tracking on all of the proper information, jump altitude, speed, uh, commands inside the aircraft. The true head and inbound is 109. Uh, in the aircraft, we do safety inspections, making sure that Anchor line cables are not twisted or frayed, making sure there's nothing that could uh, hinder a jumper from exiting the aircraft. After all the work on the ground, everyone finally boards the aircraft and takes off. You make sure all your jumpers are hooked up properly, go check their equipment, make sure everything is, is on properly. The pilots do their thing, they already know what airspeed they need to be at and what heading they need to be on, so all we need to do is make sure everything is clear in the rear along with the loading and push these guys out in a safe manner. At that point, uh, you'll wait for the load master to give you your one minute warning. You'll move into position, and then it's green light go, exit the aircraft. No matter how much experience a jumper has, parachuting is a thrill. And for Sergeant Riley, a leadership role makes it even better. Being responsible of other people for airborne operation uh, is a thrill in itself. Staff Sergeant Tristan McIntyre, Ramstein Air Base, Germany. My name is Sean Martin from Navarre, Florida. I'd like to say hello to my amazing wife, to my awesome kids, Kiara, Sebastian, and Juliana. Keep rocking, take care of each other, and listen to your mother. I miss you guys. I'll be home soon. Boogity, 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 amen. I'm Sergeant Steve Morales of 10th Sustainment Brigade, Task Force Mule Skinners, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, from Fort Drum, New York. I want to give a shout out to my mom, my dad, all my family back home, my battle buddies of Fort Drum, New York. I love and miss you all. See you guys soon. Corporal Harbaugh with Black Sea Rotational Force. I'd like to give a shout out to my friends and family in Ohio and my wife and son, Angie and Kellen. Hi, I'm Tech Sergeant Colleen Urban, currently deployed. I just want to say hi to my husband in Afghanistan, my sister Jen, and my son Killian in Las Vegas, and the rest of my friends and family in Ohio and Illinois. I miss you so much, I love you, and I'll be home soon. Coming up, we find out what measures are being implemented to ensure free and fair elections for the women of Afghanistan. And we'll showcase some of the best photos from our service members as In the Fight, presented by Divids, continues. What are the two types of jump masters in the U.S. Army? The answer when we return. Environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. I want to give a shout out to my family and friends. I want to send a shout out to my husband, to my parents, 
my family back home. I'd like to give a shout out to my girlfriend. To my family and friends in Lansing, Michigan. To my family out in Tucson, Arizona. To my beautiful wife and children in Des Moines, Iowa. To everybody in Texas. In York, Pennsylvania. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Chicago, Illinois. Harrisonburg, Virginia. Orlando, Florida. Oceanside, California. And Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. I love you guys. I miss you. And I hope I'll see you soon. What are the two types of jump masters in the U.S. Army? The answer is A and B, military freefall and static line. If you have pyrophobia, the fear of fire, and you are training with the Portuguese military, you would quickly have to find a way to put your fears aside. Army Staff Sergeant Caleb Barrio explains in this report. Then they, they threw the mark of contact. Now, U.S. troops are taking advantage of a unique training opportunity hosted by soldiers from the Portuguese Army. The 504th Battlefield Surveillance Brigade soldiers aren't just conducting new training, but also forging multinational bonds and strengthening partnerships. The, the training we're doing here not only affords us to learn stuff outside of our normal metal activities, but it also allows us to do joint training, which these guys haven't been exposed to before. But being that we're able to interact with multinational forces that have their own training standards, uh, uh, increase the realism of the training. And just overall, I've seen a huge increase in the confidence and just the teamwork with my guys. Okay. I think we all have to uh, gain with this kind of uh, change of knowledge. Uh, we with Americans, we learn from the Americans, we learn from everybody, and I think uh, it's a win-win situation. The ability to offer unique training opportunities like these are possible through the trusted expertise of military professionals from many countries, and in this case, Portugal. Whatever we can do to, to help the guys being better prepared, we are ready to do it. While the fire phobia training provided a unique skill set to the U.S. troops, the exercise proved to be another great example of nations helping nations. Reporting from the Joint Multinational Readiness Center in Hohenfels, Germany, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Caleb Barrio. With the Afghan elections getting near, NATO Channel correspondent Lalagi Snow looks at the problems many Afghan women are still facing and what measures are being implemented to ensure free and fair elections. Women's rights have come a long way in the last 12 years in Afghanistan, yet the struggle for emancipation is still in its infancy. And with the presidential elections looming ever closer, the pressure is on to ensure that the gains made for women in Afghanistan are not lost and that they can participate freely and fairly in the country's new democracy. 2014 is very important for Afghan women. We try our best that we can mobilize women to come and participate in election. Their vote is their strength. Of course, this is the only means that women can show their power. حضور خانم ها بسیار زیاد اهمیت دارد چون چه خانم ها در انتخابات اشتراک نکنند رای به صندوق ها نیاندازند اولین تاثیرش است که مشروعیت انتخابات زیر سوال میره و در لحظه که زن ها هم نیمی از پنکره جامعه افغانستان را تشکیل میدن However in the last presidential elections female voters themselves face huge problems when it came to having their voices heard and voting شاید ازی هستم که زمان که یک کس رفت در یکی از ولایات کارت گرفت از دفتر ثبت نام رای دهندگان بیرون شد و به سر one of the main challenges, the physical um, security, that we are hoping with the support of international community, our army that so far showed their success, they maintain that success. The Independent Election Commission has also committed to providing a secure environment for women to vote freely. حقی که برای مردو در نظر گرفته شده حین حق برای خانوما هم در نظر گرفته شده Indeed, with a new generation of voters now registering for the first time this security is imperative This new generation that's coming they will see themselves in a big gap so the only means that they can narrow that gap and they can be a part of the power is to come and to vote 
Otherwise, no one can understand them, no one can fill them, and they will be always isolated, and their talent, their, um, the beauty of their energy, they all can get wasted. However, with a 25% increase of violence against women this year alone reported by the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission, the fate of women in Afghanistan hangs very much in the balance. It is very tough, but, but I believe in hard work. I believe in determination. And I believe that if we get together and if we realise the time that we are right now and our small movement our small movement can, can bring the biggest changes in this country. This is Lalaki Snow in Kabul for the NATO Channel. DIVIDS is a 24-7 operation that provides a timely, accurate and reliable connection between the media and the military serving worldwide. Through a network of over 200 portable satellite transmitters around the globe and a distribution hub in Atlanta, Georgia, DIVIDS gives you access to the front lines with live and archived broadcast video, still imagery, and print products. Visit our website at dividshub.net and search through our enormous video and photo library. Register on our website to gain complete access to high-definition content, along with breaking news alerts and webcasts from top military officials. For questions or comments about In the Fight or Divids, you can email us at ondemand at dividshub.net or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. As we close, we feature some of the best photos that Divids has to offer. As we listen to Eddie Horst's composition, Pangea. See you next time, In the Fight.